In all, somewhere between 200 and 400 million dollars was stolen from the banks. The Treasury at the time was paying a lot of money to bail out these banks, and people were, you know, saying, well, why? What are we paying? Who are the people who got these monies? You know, somebody stole these monies. <laughs> penso é que ainda há fragilidades do sistema. Estou a falar do sistema uh, de justiça, da aplicação. Mozambique, 2004. Organized crime and corruption has become an embarrassment to the government of Frelimo. Huge amounts of money have been stolen from the banks. The questions people are asking is, who stole this money and how did they get away with it? the interests of either the borrowers or the lenders. And so that's why you see here there are no prosecutions and that the elites feel free to manipulate state institutions to ensure their ability to steal substantial amounts of money. To tackle the problem of organized crime, an anti-corruption law has recently been passed by Parliament and to help enforce it, an anti-corruption unit has been formed. Isabel Rupia, head of this unit, has a difficult task ahead. I remember the year past, when this unit was created, the anti-corruption unit was created, someone told me, you know, doctor, this war is like a war of liberation national. As a new wave of law students celebrate their graduation, they are addressed by Judge Trendade, a senior judge known for campaigning to reform the legal system. In Mozambique, some magistrates, judges and prosecutors have been threatened and uh, the environment uh, among the judges and prosecutors is not uh, very, very safe in, the, in that way. Tivemos o caso de um juiz que foi assassinado e, e não foi descoberto o assassino. Tivemos o caso de uma juíza também que foi assassinada. Vai incentivar o próprio criminoso, porque ele já teve, não teve exemplos de punição anterior. This falls into the overall pattern of clinic economic development in the country. Uh, you have a number of very important uh, families in Frelimo, five or six uh, in, my, uh, in, in my count. Uh, they have preference in business deals that involved uh, uh, state money. Uh, state funds or uh, concessionary loans from outside. They have a lot of influence in the use of, of donor money. And this is probably the pattern of uh, feudal development uh, throughout history. And this is where we are. At. 
The murder of renowned investigative journalist Carlos Cardoso in November 2000 quickly drew international attention to the state of lawlessness in the country. At the time of his death, Cardoso was investigating large-scale bank fraud and had received warnings not to continue. I think that Carlos, through his word, became a very powerful man and a too powerful man in Mozambique. He was not afraid, he was not afraid of denouncing things that he saw were wrong in, in Mozambique, in the society. But he was a journalist who investigated things and wouldn't shut up. He was pursuing uh, things wherever, wherever they led. And people who were inconvenienced by his investigations knew that the only way to shut him up was to murder him. There were two state-owned banks, Banco Comercial and the Banco Popular de Desenvolvimento, which was later renamed Banco Austral. And in the mid-1990s, the World Bank and the IMF insisted that those two banks be privatized. Even before privatization, the banking sector was already experiencing serious problems with fraud. Corrupt businessmen had deposited millions of dollars worth of fraudulent checks into Banco Austral. Money that did not exist, that was later withdrawn as cash. No one honest wanted those two Mozambican banks, and the only people who would take them in both cases were a consortium of a corrupt foreign partner and corrupt members of the Mozambican elite who came together to make a bid. The Frelimo of Samora Marshall had been intolerant of dishonesty amongst officials and people in power. This was a socialist country with uh, a lot of uh, discipline within the leadership ranks for certain wrongdoings if uh, it would be some uh, petty theft you will be uh, punished. When Mozambique gained independence from Portuguese colonial rule in 1975, the apartheid regime in South Africa, along with the United States government, financed a civil war that would prevent Frelimo from building a fairer society for ordinary Mozambicans. In 1986, Samora Machel died in a mysterious plane crash. As the war with South Africa got worse, the destruction here got really massive. Perhaps a third of the population was displaced. A million people died in this war. And Mozambique became increasingly dependent on foreign assistance, foreign loans. Literally billions of dollars flowed in to keep Mozambique alive. <laughs> Civil war forced Mozambique to open its investment. Two things became imperative to engage this help. A United Nations-led peace plan that would end the war and the selling off of state-owned industry and services. By the early 1990s, Cardoso had become an open critic of government economic policy. It was not necessarily the politics of Frelimo, the official politics of Frelimo, which he continued to agree with. It was more that um, there were things that were developing that were uh, not good for the society. It endangers democracy itself. I mean, if a parliament is not allowed to make decisions, if a, go if a country cannot is not allowed to make the fundamental decisions of governing their society. Obviously, I mean, where is our democracy doesn't mean anything. If we take a decision, the IMF doesn't like it.